Hello there, and welcome to the Super Mario Maker 2 episode. Now today we're going to be trying to handle uh, this level, which I got in a stream. Uh, as you can see, there is a 0.1 or 0.01 percent clear rate. Uh, this two out of ten thousand. Uh, if there's only one, this is eventually just going to round down to zero. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at who's beaten this actually. <laughs> Surprise! I actually have beaten it. Uh, so I was playing it during the stream, and uh, after the stream was over, I decided to try a few more times just to like get a sense for if there's a way to beat it. And somehow, randomly, lucky enough, within five minutes, I was able to actually beat this level. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't recording it because I was really not expecting that I would actually uh, beat it. But we're going to try and beat it again, uh, so you can have a look at how uh, how this is, can actually be achieved. This uh, super low clear rate and from what I remember, it wasn't as hard as it seemed, but <laughs> we'll see how long it takes for us to get back there. Without any further ado, let's get started. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> oh gosh, that's one heck of a clear rate you got. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, we'll try it <laughs> for a bit, and we'll see if there's any hope. Um, yeah, so... Uh, 0% <laughs> out of 5,000 tries. Okay. I mean, yeah. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. A little reminiscent of good old Dale. I feel like I should be spin jumping or something. I'm amazed I got it that far without dying, but I forgot it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Sending eagle powers. I think I'm going to need... Um, a lot more eagle powers, or other powers, or basically all the powers. <laughs> but, ah, oh, shucks. I wish I could do it as consistently as I did the first time. So, I suppose you need to get there probably a lot faster, because this is going to be challenging to do. Oh, that jump over there, that's going to be quite something. Wow, made it 70%. That last 30% must be quite a doozy if nobody else has beaten it yet. But we'll see. Power of Dale compels me. Dale being that little spike dude. Whoops. I don't need to see Mario. Huh. So how am I going to outspeed the thwomp? It's as if I have to keep my momentum up the whole time. It's funny, this part of the level makes me it gives me the sense of like, yeah, I can definitely do this, this is fine. But then here. How am I going to outrun the thwomp once I get to that conveyor? It's almost like I have to jump over the thwomp or something like that. Yeah, that's the end! But, uh, I think I need to spin jump through that last set of gears, but after I do that, I think I would have to run against the gears? Oh, maybe there was a spring, or not a spring, a note block I didn't see that's going to force the thwomp to jump up. We will see. No! <laughs> the end right after the conveyor, so we were so close, but I have still have an odd feeling we were yet so far. Shells already remember this one. Um, this is reminding me of Robocop's Desert or De Deadly Desert Dash. For some reason. Because um, there's a lot of like dodging thwomps and gears that you have to dodge as well. And it was also in the desert, but it was Mario 3 theme. <laughs> no way! Okay, this is probably the last try before trying the next level. Again, not the end of this level for me. Unless I beat it this time, I mean, that t could happen. Oh, I was starting to think it might have actually been possible. <laughs> okay, so I will mark it as a loss for now, but I will try and come back to it for sure. Okay, so here we have an auto-scroller. Where we have to dodge all of these little spiky balls. This is actually the easy part of the level. This is where things start to ramp up. <laughs> and it's not a good start, that's for sure. So, 
once we get to that part, one of the important differences between how I was playing this on stream versus how I was playing it right after was that you don't want to slow down when you're running off of this platform coming up right here. You just want to keep running. <sighs> just want to keep running. I was slowing down because I thought when I was going to run that I was going to run straight into the gears, but it turns out that you're totally fine to run there. So. That gives you a lot more time than I was giving myself to get past the next set of gears, which would just basically instantly kill you otherwise. So... <laughs> this might take us a little bit of time to get back. Um... So close. One of the things about the level is that um, it doesn't look all that hard to get around those saws, but I think it's because you're used to Mario being roughly in the middle of the screen constantly. So you're used to that frame of reference, but in this one, because of the auto scroll, Mario isn't always in the middle of the screen, so it kind of throws off your ability to do some jumps as consistently as you normally would, because you normally have kind of the middle of the screen to play with, so it's interesting how that adjusts your ability to handle that particular part of the level. Oh man, <laughs> I was doing this so consistently before. Okay, okay, you get it. I died a lot. Alright, I get it. It's fine. Alright, <laughs> let's just stop the fail montage there, and let's focus on maybe a few of the runs that were maybe a little more interesting. Oh, I wonder how many times it's going to take us to get back. I don't know why Mario didn't spin jump there. You can't be doing sort of bad. You have to do either fully bad or really good.
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what do you even say? What do you even say? Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Oh. Now that that feels that feels really great. Um yeah, not gonna lie, that, that felt great to beat that level again, but oh my gosh. I was really close to just giving up. I just kept thinking to myself, oh come on, you've already beaten this level, you don't have to prove it to the world, you already have the marker telling everybody that you've beaten it. Um, but then the thought is, oh, people might think there's somebody else who beat this level on my behalf or whatever else. No, I must be able to beat this level again. Not only that, is that I didn't have a world record to start, so uh, it would have been kind of nice if I was able to beat it and actually get the world record. Um, hopefully I didn't get the other guy to <laughs> now be trying to steal my record um, and having to play this level again. If anybody takes this record, I am more than happy to let them have it, by the way. Uh, Alright, now let's talk through the level. So. The the level in itself had a really cool concept uh, in general. Um, mostly a lot of it was just precision and really hard to execute. Okay, so in the beginning you have all the spike balls, and from here uh, there could probably be a few different strategies that you could take. You could What I did for the most part is just jumping over them with normal B-jumps. What I never really bothered to try and figure out is maybe there's some kind of a weird perfect timing of if you do spin jumps off of a certain ball, maybe you can just keep spin jumping all the way. I have no idea. Uh, but that could be an alternative rather than doing the jumping that I did. Once you get to the wall, uh, then you have to jump around. Um, so depending on how well you did, you'll kind of see how much space you have once you're sort of running into the uh, saw section. The weird part about this is that you can only do really well or really poorly. If you do somewhere in between, you're gonna die. So at those saws, the important piece is that you want to be able to run full tilt off of the ledge and onto the ground that starts the thwomp chase sequence. The reason for doing this is it gives you the most time to escape the thwomp. In the Twitch stream uh, that I was doing, I constantly died to the thwomp. Um, because I always did a little bit of a panic back move so that I wouldn't hit the saws and then go forward that way, but there was no way for me to outrun the thwomp at that point. So you really need to do full tilt there, but if you arrive at there at a time that's too early, uh, you're okay. If you arrive too late, you'll be sort of off the screen and your running will be okay. But if you're somewhere in between, there's this sweet spot that you'll actually get pushed by the screen ever so slightly and into the saw and die. <laughs> so um, that was probably one of the most more annoying ways to lose because you don't usually get penalized for doing an average job. You usually get penalized for doing poorly. Um, but anyway, so that was that part. And then there's this saw section. So uh, a lot of this was trial and error, so I don't know if all of this is going to be fully correct, but you have a little bit more time than you might expect. So when you're jumping over the first set of saws, this one is a pretty straightforward jump. Just jump, and I think you have to hold a little bit back to make sure you don't get hit by the saw. The second jump is pretty critical, so you need to pull back a little bit so you don't go face first into the saw. Um, but you don't want to pull back too much because you're not going to have enough momentum to get over the saw if you pull back too much. So for here, I think you pull back a little bit in the beginning, and then once you're high enough, you do you go pull it back in the other direction again to go forward, and then as soon as you're over the saw, then you pull back again a bit so that you don't run into the next saws. This was pretty hard to pull off, and this is probably where most of my deaths were. Um, so that that was pretty tough. Now the next spot with the twirling saws, this part, again, it might be a little bit up in the air, but I'm pretty sure you can't just full tilt run through those. Uh, you need to slow down and time it so that you kind of arc your parabola, I guess, uh, such that you go through the saws, but if you go too fast, you're going to hit the top saw. And if you go too slow, you're going to hit the bottom saw. So you need to pull back a little bit and then do uh, a jump through the saws and, and get to the next part. So now here, all you have to do is a spin jump. Now, I'm pretty sure you can't do a full spill, a spin jump because then you'll die, I think. So you need to do sort of like a, a small spin jump. and. Uh, it's hard to recommend exactly what you need to do there. It's close to a full jump, but not quite, so you need to lower yourself a little bit. But 
if you're, again, too weak, you're going to hit the saw on the bottom. Too strong, you're going to hit the saw on the top. Once you get there, all you want to do is just take your controller <laughs> that I'm holding upside down and just hold <laughs> as far as you can in the other direction. Um, so just keep running. Just keep running. And if you saved enough time, if you didn't lose enough time kind of doing your back and forth with saws, then you will make it to the victory and uh, be able to claim that you've beaten this 0.01% chance clear rate level. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I think that's just about going to wrap it up for me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.